Okay. Okay, I won't do that.
Good morning, good people, and welcome. Welcome to service today uh, at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Beautiful, beautiful weather this morning. Um, I got up at my regular uh, body clock time, not because I could not use an additional hour, but my two cats, they're used to 4.40 in the morning, they get their breakfast. So we got up together and went on a beautiful, beautiful walk, um, and Hisako and I got together. So. It's so wonderful to worship with you today. We are excited. We have Claire, Pastor Claire in the house today. So let's put our hands together for uh, This has been a, a busy, busy week for all of us. I uh, want to thank everyone that uh, helped with the preparations uh, for last Sunday when we said uh, goodbye to uh, Pastor Paul Olson, we uh, wish him well on his next endeavor. Um, we also have uh, some good news and some um, difficult news. We have uh, Carlene has returned home. Um, does anyone know which day exactly that was? It was Friday. Um, uh, James Consul is is not doing uh, very well, uh, so let let's all uh, keep them in our prayers. Uh, today, after service, we have, I think, the third and uh, the last um, space committee update. You guys have seen how Christy is set up that wonderful inviting with wonderful food that I'm sure Dean has brought in. So please, uh, if you would like to look at the space committee, what we plan to do with um, the building in the next few years, uh, please stop by after service. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Good morning. <laughs> I woke up this morning with an extra hour of sleep and uh, looked out the window to a beautiful sunrise and thought to myself, oh boy, I get to go see my friends at Our Saviors. So I'm so glad to be with all of you. It's been a while and I'm really looking forward to worshiping with you today. So I thought we'd begin our worship with a centering time. And I'm going to play a few tones from my steel drum that I used to play when I was here before, just to get us centered. And then we'll have a, just a few moments of silence before we begin our worship. begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. 
Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are children's, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. us and calls us beloved. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power wisdom and strength and honor blessing and glory are his this is the feast of victory for our god alleluia alleluia this is the feast of victory for our god all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Revelations 7, verses 9 through 17. <clears throat> After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, 
from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb is at the center of the throne, will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22 responsibly. If you would read the words in bold. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness in the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your face be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. <clears throat> o Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is from 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is All Saints Sunday. We celebrate this church festival every year, the first Sunday of November. It began as a commemoration of the martyrs who had died for the faith, and it's since become a day when we honor and remember the faithful people in our lives who have died. On this day, we celebrate that we still have a strong spiritual connection to those who have gone before us. In our liturgy, we affirm that those who have died have joined a great cloud of witnesses that surround and guide us in our faith every day. Martin Luther believed that we are all both sinner and saint, both saints and sinners. Sinners because of our rebellious nature, but saints because of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at today's gospel from Matthew. This section of scripture is known as the Beatitudes. It forms the beginning of what's known as the Sermon on the Mount. Notice there are nine statements that start with the word blessed or blessed. In our popular culture, we associate this word with a prayer before a meal, saying a blessing. Or we might think of blessing a union of people in a wedding. The biblical meaning of this term is an expression of the inner joy and peace that comes from being connected with God. Let me repeat that. An expression of the inner joy and peace that comes from our connection with God. An inner joy and peace that transcends what happens in the world around us. That's why you can experience God's blessings even in the midst of crisis and hardship. Another thing that's striking about the Beatitudes is that there is a divine reversal in this passage. The people who you might think of being blessed in our culture, the rich, the famous, and the privileged, are not at all the people that Jesus calls blessed in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus calls blessed the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. These are the ones that have the true picture of the vision of the kingdom of God. These are the saints, our mentors in the faith, who have gone before us and who live among us. I'd like you to bring to mind right now a saint in your life, past or present, who has been a mentor for you in the faith or shaped your faith in some way. Someone who has been an example for you of what it means to be Christ-like. They are among the saints that we honor and remember today. Well, as I was thinking of that question, the two saints that came to my mind were my mom, her name was Billy, who died of cancer when she was 57, and the other is my best friend from childhood. Let me tell you a little bit about them. When I was a kid, one of the places we lived was Weston, Connecticut. 
And when I was in first grade, I met Mary Ray. She went by Ray, and she became my best friend. Her dad was on TV. His name was Harry Reasoner. And we watched him on the news and on 60 Minutes every week. Ray was Catholic, and she had six brothers and sisters. I was fascinated by her church when I went with her. We would get to put holy water on our heads. When we came into the church, we got to kneel when we prayed. We got to make the sign of the cross on our foreheads during the liturgy. It was really fun. It was so much fun for me that during the week, I suggested to Ray that we play church in the woods. So Ray and I would sit on this long log that was our pew. We would bring pieces of bread from our houses, and we would give each other communion. Then we'd go over to the stream that ran through the woods, and we would baptize each other, making the sign of the cross on each other's foreheads. When other little girls were playing house, I was playing church in the woods with Ray. <laughs> we stayed in contact as best friends for many years, even when we moved away. But as we got older, we lost track of one another. Then one day, many years later, she called me out of the blue. It was a week before my wedding. I asked her about her life, but she kept avoiding it and only wanted to talk about when we were kids. Then she asked if she could be in my wedding. I told her the wedding was already planned, but that she was welcome to come. I realized after that phone call that Ray was dealing with some mental health issues. We talked on the phone from time to time after that, and I would send her birthday cards but she never wanted to talk about her life. I talked to her sister one day and got confirmation that Ray had been dealing with serious mental health issues for years. I kept her in my prayers. When my sister and I were visiting, we started talking about our childhood memories of the Reasoners, and I realized that I hadn't heard from Ray for a while. We decided to look her up on Facebook we couldn't find her at first, but we dug a little deeper and found a newspaper article online that said Ray had taken her life just a few months earlier. I was completely stunned. My best friend from childhood was dead. All the memories from our time together as kids came rushing back to me. I felt so sad. I discovered on Facebook that her older sister lived in Lakewood, Colorado, and I contacted Anne and met her for coffee after not seeing her for over 50 years. We were both grateful to be able to share our memories of Ray. At a Rocky Mountain Theological Conference years ago, we were asked to think of one of the first experiences in our lives that shaped our faith. I remember that first time I went to church with Ray and the Reasoners, which sparked in me a love of ritual and liturgy. I remembered playing church in the woods with Ray and how it kindled my love of the sacraments, communion, and baptism. That special time together in my formative years shaped my faith in many ways and was one of the first seeds planted in my life that later grew into my desire to become a pastor. Ray Reasoner was a saint in my life. My mom was the other saint in my life that influenced my faith greatly. She was my biggest mentor in faith. When I was a teenager, she wrote liturgies for our church and preached in our church when our pastor was on vacation. And this was at a time when women were not yet able to be ordained in a Lutheran church. My mom inspired me with her courageous faith, and she encouraged me to do what my heart called me to do and be. So the first time that I heard that women were being ordained in the church, I decided to go to seminary, and she supported me all the way. 
I read some of my mom's poetry this week as I remembered her and decided to write a letter to her, thanking her for all the blessings she had given me in my life. And even though she's no longer here physically, I feel that she was able to read my letter. Like me, I know that all of you can think of people who have shaped your faith and showed you the love of God in what they said or did. So I invite you now to pair up with someone near you and share with them a little bit about this saint in your life, the blessings that they have given you, and how they've made a difference in your life. So we're going to allow a minute and a half for each of you to share. And at the end of that minute and a half, you'll hear this. And then the other person will share. And then at the end of that, I'll pray the chimes again, and we'll come back to the rest of the sermon. So you may begin. Find someone that you would like to share with about a saint in your life. Switch if you haven't already. Has everyone done, or do you still have to share? Do you still have more sharing? Just a, let's just allow a few more minutes for or for you to wrap up. Go ahead.
I have a sense we could talk about these saints for a long time, and I hope you continue to remember these saints in your life, how they've touched you, and share with other people about them. And then maybe think of a response that you might have, like writing them a letter, thanking them, or doing something or being someone that they inspired you to do or be. We honor all of these saints today through our memories that we carry in our hearts and our minds. You'll have a chance to name them out loud later in the prayer time. As I was reflecting on the Beatitudes this week in light of the Middle East conflict and the latest shooting in Lewiston, the phrase, phrases from our gospel that kept floating through my mind were, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I think we join many, many people around the world today who are feeling empty and angry and sad and scared at all the senseless violence that keeps happening all around us. I remember just a few years ago when three people were gunned down during a shooting that happened in a Thornton Walmart. I had been in that Walmart just hours before the shooting. It really shook me up because it was so close to home. The more and more we hear about these shootings, they get closer and closer to home. As we get closer to another election day and are aware of the deep divisions that are so present in our families, in our communities, and in our world that cause so much pain, we can find some comfort in today's Old Testament lesson. In Revelations, it says that the saints are those who have come out of the great ordeal, which is life on earth to enter into a new life where their robes have been washed white by the Lamb, Jesus Christ, where they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They are in a place where they will hunger and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them or any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Today, as we continue to walk through this life that often feels like a great ordeal, that is often filled with challenges and obstacles and roadblocks, let us remember that we follow in the footsteps of these saints and will one day join them in God's kingdom of grace. In the meantime, we have an opportunity to realize the blessings that have been given by God and to realize that we are a blessing. We are called to be a blessing to one another, even to be saints to one another. Not necessarily just in big ways, but in the many small ways that we can offer love, kindness, and care to our family, friends, and even strangers every day. Smiling at someone who looks exhausted walking by you in the street. Holding the door open for a family with young children going into a store or a mall. Looking at a waiter or a cashier right in the eye and saying, how's your day going today? And really meaning it. These may seem like small gestures, but to someone who's hurting and feeling disconnected in life, it can be a lifeline to love. And so today, as we honor and celebrate the saints who have gone before us, let us remember that we are both sinners and saints. Let us claim that we are blessed to be a blessing. And let us respond to our calling to be the hands and the heart and the voice of Christ in the world. Let us pray. God, in a time of such great division and pain, 
we recognize and honor the saints who have gone before us that inspired us in the faith, that were like you in so many ways. Help us to be like them. Help us to walk in your way of love and peace and justice. And help us to remember that we are sinners, but we are also saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, <clears throat> tended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, the church triumphant gathers around your throne to praise you. We join them in worship and remember your sustaining grace in every generation. Hear
feel our division, show us unity in your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, we marvel at your creation revealed in the cycle of seasons, changing landscapes and the rise and fall of ocean tides. Turn us from selfish consumption and open us to gentle healing of the earth so all creation thrives. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Advocate, we lift grateful hearts for the ability to vote and elect leaders. Grant wisdom to those who will be elected and safety to poll workers. May civic leaders serve the whole community, especially all who are underrepresented or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Healer, bless the brokenhearted and all who mourn. Send your compassion to all who grieve. Grant wholeness to those who are sick and accompany the dying. Be near to all who need you, especially those we name now in our hearts or out loud. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Comforter, we pray for this congregation that the promise of your new life may be shared and experienced. We pray for the funeral ministry of this congregation, that families and friends seeking your love find it here. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, for the saints who now rest in your mercy, we give you thanks. We remember their witnesses of faithfulness and love. Please say out loud or silently the names of loved ones who have died that you honor and remember today. Billy. Ray. Praise to you for the eternal life they have been given through Jesus Christ. Hear us, O oh God. We now offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's pass the peace. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back.
Let's sing, create in me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that, as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. So, some of you remember when I served you um, as a bridge for a while, that I taught you a call and response Lord's Prayer. How many of you remember that? Okay, awesome. So we're going to do that again. 
And for those of you who have not heard this before, it's really easy. I just sing a petition of the Lord's Prayer, and you repeat it after me until we get to the end of the prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth, on earth, as in heaven, as in heaven, please give to us, please give to us, all that we need, all that we need, and leave. Away from sin, for the kingdom, power and glory are yours, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Alleluia. We know and believe that Christ is truly present in, with, and under these simple gifts. The mystery of bread and wine become his body and blood for us. Rest assured, Christ welcomes you at his table to know his presence and to receive forgiveness and life. Come to the table of grace. Come, hold in your hand and taste in your lips the love we cannot comprehend. At this table, Christ is both host and guest, and all are welcome. Come with open hands and eager hearts, for the body and blood of life are given for you. Come, set your hope upon God, who richly provides us with every good thing. Come and taste the joy of God. Can communion assistants come forward?
thankful hearts and voices raise. Tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fix your sight on the servant's plight and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed could the world be about to turn? My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your spirit will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king be aware for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the 
day you break, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Ted, this is Carlene. Are you hosting today? <laughs> <laughs> 